welcome viewers to the NLP Liberation Front. What have I been reading? What's good? Uh, this is important book I'm going to assign to you. A very important book from a political perspective and from an intellectual perspective. Eric Fromm, Escape from Freedom. And Fromm wrote Escape from Freedom in 1941. So when this was written, it was not a settled matter whether we would be under Nazi domination or domination of what we would consider the Western liberal tradition. From this is, and I think this is this is Fromm's best book, um, easily the the most readable, most to the point, um, most clearly expressing what he's saying. In here, Fromm verges on what we would think of as NLP type consciousness or NLP thinking, without ever, of course, being aware that that's what he was talking about. And he's talking about a certain kind of mind, what we would call the regurgitative mind. And the regurgitative mind is a mind that uh, takes in information, theories, concepts, etc., and doesn't seem to do it very much processing with them other than just storing them as they are. And if you ask for an explanation or a description, um, no further development really happens with uh, that, that thought. It just simply is regurgitated or repeated out. And I've noticed in every discipline, in every field, in universities, in um, seminars, in when I used to take the EST seminars, um, and into NLP, things I read even, there is a tremendous amount of regurgitation. So we, we have to be aware that, that the regurgitative state, I think, is actually a developmental state that all people go through. Some people get through it in their teens and they, are, they regurgitate everything that comes in, they regurgitate it back out. Other people in their 20s, some people go through their entire life being basically regurgitators. But I, I do believe that it is a, uh, a stable neurological developmental condition that the mind goes through in preparation for what we would think of as a more elastic um, free will type higher level understanding. So simply because people are regurgitating and, and very, um, very fond of their regurgitations, just repeating things formulaically, doesn't mean that they are not going to move to a higher state of understanding. It's just a state people go through. Uh, perhaps this does become a problem when people are stuck in regurgitation and they, they cannot distinguish between regurgitation and insight or genuine insight. Here in um, uh, this edition of Eric Fromm's Escape from Freedom on page 191, he's pretty much talking about the regurgitative mind and the, and the dynamics. So he's going drilling down sort of what is an example of the regurgita regurgitative mind. And he makes a very, very interesting statement about how the mind thinks, actually sort of stepping into this mindset. And he says here, um, Another reader's opinion may become the outcome of a moment's embarrassment, the fear of being thought uninformed, and hence the thought is essentially a front. Okay, got that? The thought is essentially a front and not the result of a natural combination of experience, desire, and knowledge. Okay, the same phenomenon is to be found in aesthetic judgments, judgments of taste. The average person who goes to a museum and looks at a picture by a famous painter, say Rembrandt, judges it to be beautiful and an impressive picture. If we analyze his judgment, we find that he does not have, does not have any particular inner response to the picture but thinks it is beautiful because he knows he is supposed to think it is beautiful. Okay, that's interesting. He thinks, that person thinks, ah, this is beautiful and has some sensation of this thing being beautiful because he knows that he is supposed to think that it is beautiful. The same phenomenon is evident with regard to people's judgment of music and with regard to the act of perception itself. Now, this is a very key point. With regard to the act of perception itself, as I am perceiving those sirens going by, being New York, we listen to a lot of those here, and I do not judge that to be a beautiful sound. 
Um, many persons looking at a famous bit of scenery, okay, he's talking about direct perception, they're just looking at some scenery, actually reproduce the pictures they have seen of it numerous times. Say, on postal cards, and while believing they see the scenery, they have these pictures before their eyes. Or, in experiencing an accident which occurs in their presence, something they have physically been present and seen, they see or hear the situation in terms of the newspaper report they anticipate. As a matter of fact, for many people, an experience which they have had, an artistic performance or a political meeting they have attended, becomes real to them, okay, becomes real to them only after they have read about it in a newspaper. 1941, so he's talking about newspaper and radio. But isn't that fascinating that there is this reversal of perception and the way that the perception is being shaped and presented through the media becomes the expectation of the viewer and the viewer or the perceiver, the one who's attending the experience, is actually experiencing it through the filters and through the, the uh, norms and through the cliches that have been provided by the media. And I think Fromm was one of the first truly brilliant anticipators of that idea of people seeing things through their social media. Um, the other book I'm going to recommend, and along these lines, and you must read this. If you're going to become competent above and beyond the kind of run-of-the-mill, you know, there's this kind of run-of-the-mill regurgitation of the NLP blah, blah, blah. And, but that doesn't make any NLP people any different from the other regurgitators, of whom there are very many, uh, people who get together to, say, watch Glenn Beck on television. It's not enough that they're watching this um, person <laughs> with evident uh, mental um, eccentricities, to put it quite mildly, but they get together so they can all collectively share the, experiencing, the experience of watching someone who appears to be a full-blown idiot. And perceiving this as profound wisdom, because this idiocy has been uh, presented in such a way that it's taken in as deep wisdom. But let's move to real wisdom. Uh, Elkonen Goldberg, he's a Latvian guy. Uh, the Wisdom Paradox. That really annoys me, in the sense of annoying noise. I've learned to put up with it. The Wisdom Paradox, Okunen Goldberg. And uh, this, is, again, is a foundational or fundamental piece of our NLP learning. So if you want to get out of the regurgitative loop and move to the post-regurgitative state of NLP, which is a very, very different, more ontological state of NLP, um, pick up Eric Fromm, Escape from Freedom, and pick up Elkhorn and Goldberg, The Wisdom Paradox, and spend some time, and I do mean seriously spend some time, underlining, making notes, comparing this with your experience, and till, till you start to get it, till you start to sort of get the, the kind of the, the regurgitative clinch and how to get out of that, uh, pers that, that position of being constrained by sort of the, the, great, the great loops, 